Hi everyone, and today we're going to be looking at intermolecular forces, specifically the three different types, which are London dispersal, dispersion forces, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. So what are intermolecular forces? Well, within atoms, with, within a molecule, they're bonded by covalent bonds. These are intramolecular bonds. However, in addition to these bonds, there are forces that exist between molecules, which are known as intermolecular forces, which means between. The intermolecular, intermolecular forces are responsible for physical properties such as the boiling point, melting point, and solubility of a substance. So let's start by looking at the first one, which is a London dispersion force, or for short, we're going to use LDF. So London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces, which we'll learn about later, are also collectively known as van der Waals forces. So, what are London dispersion forces? They are the weakest type of intermolecular force, and they exist between all atoms and molecules. They consist of temporary or instantaneous dipoles and an induced dipole. So, as you can see in this diagram over here, this is how London dispersion force works. At a certain moment in time, the electrons may be concentrated on one side of the atom, giving the side a slightly negative charge, and the opposite side a slightly positive charge. These opposite charges are giving the symbols partially positive and partial negative. A molecule with a temporary dipole can induce a dipole in a neighboring molecule, which is known as an induced dipole. London dispersion forces, as I mentioned, are relatively weak, and this strength depends on two factors. First of, it, first of all, the polari polarizability, which is the ease which the electrons in an atom or molecule form a temporary or induced dipole, and then the surface area of the molecule. Generally, as the molar mass of a molecule increases, so does the polarizability, which results in a larger temporary or induced dipole being formed within the molecule, which leads to a stronger LDF. As the LDF increase but between molecules increase, the boiling point also increases because the strength of the as the strength increases between the molecules, um, we can see that down the group the boiling point increases. Next, we're going to look at the dipole-dipole forces. So dipole-dipole forces only exist between polar molecules that have a permanent dipole. A common example is hydrogen chloride, which we're looking at over here. So it arises due to a difference in electronegativity between the two elements. And one has a lower electronegativity value and, partial, um, and a partially positive charge, and the higher electronegativity value and a partially positive, oh, sorry, partially negative. The force of attraction occurs between the partially negative and partially, uh, the partial negative chat, um, <clears throat> charge of one atom and then the partially positive chat, uh, charge, sorry, this should be positive, of the other atom. Lastly, we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at the third type. This is hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is um, hydrogen bonded with nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So this is a diagram for how it would work in water. So hydrogen bonding uh, occurs between molecules that have an electronegative nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom directly bonded to a hydrogen atom. It is often described as a stronger type of a dipole-dipole attraction. So hydrogen bonding occurs between the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen in water and, um, and the hydrogen atom on a nearby water molecule, as you can see here. So the strength generally for intermolecular forces is hydrogen bonding is the strongest, then dipole-dipole forces, and then the London dispersion forces. Here's an example of this in terms of group 16. As you can see, uh, H2O, water, has the highest boiling point because it has both hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole, and London dispersion forces. Next up, H2S has, this, has only dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces, so the boiling point is going to be less than H2O. Then the boiling point slightly increases because the dipole-dipole forces strengthen, and then that again follows for the last element in the period, in the group. 
So that is a general introduction to intermolecular forces, and I hope it makes more sense now. Thank you.